Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 671. Getting old and frail? Getting frail means getting old. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. I'm Dr. Kathy Maupin, and today we're going to talk about one of the subjects I talk about in my office all the time, and that is frailty. It's, it's, it's a word nobody uses in normal conversation, but doctors use it all the time. So I have a few questions for you, and you can think about yourself or somebody that you love who is aging, and that you've noticed that they're aging, but you don't know exactly what you're seeing that tells you that. So do you ache all over? Are you weaker all the time? So you can't lift boxes. You can't uh, work out at the gym as long. Your stamina is bad. Are are your clothes hanging off of you? Did your your skirts get longer because you're losing muscle mass and uh, your clothes look longer because you don't have as much in your shoulder muscles to hold you up? Do you walk slower? Do you hold on to things? Do you have to hold on to things when you walk down the stairs? All of these are signs of becoming frail. And overall, medicine has no cure for this in terms of mainstream medicine. Frailty means you're getting old, doctors notice it, and then they say you're frail, which means you're on your way out. That's not how I look at it, and that's not how it should be looked at because we can be healthy and not frail throughout our lifetime until we die. So there is an answer. So please listen. First of all, as a physician, I'm a people watcher. I have to be. Part of the things that you're trained with, uh, trained to do is to look at a patient uh, objectively and decide if the, how they walk. Are they walking well? Do they limp? Do they, is there a sign of illness? Is there a sign of in how they look, what their muscle mass is. Are they overweight? Are they underweight? Are their clothes hanging off of them? Are they disheveled? Do they take care of themselves or not? All of these things are things that we're trained to observe with a patient. And one of the things that we are trained to observe is frailty. So frailty can be defined as visible loss of muscle mass, bone mass, energy, and strength. So when I see a patient and I shake their hand, I can tell by the strength of their, of their grip whether they are becoming frail or not. I can tell by looking at them if they're becoming frail. Uh, women often have more of this, but men do too. Frailty makes our, our spine, osteoporosis, and our, and our, um, and our discs squeeze together so that we kind of lean over and we look at the ground when we walk. That's a sign of of becoming frail and old. Um, So frailty is really a visible sign of aging to doctors, but also to other people. You may not notice what what you see when you see three people, all different ages, and you notice that one of them is old. You may just be absorbing the fact that they're frail and that, or they're walking slowly, or they're looking at the ground, you may not know that in your mind, that's really you judging them as being frail. The opposite of frailty is being robust, having good muscle mass, having uh, quick thoughts, being able to um, do the same exercise you've always done for years, being able to walk with confidence, being able to stand up straight. Um, when, When we're in a frail mode, we're catabolic, we're breaking down all our tissues. Muscle, bone, skin, everything becomes lax or thinner, and that, may, that causes us to be frail. So what does frailty mean to a doctor? Um, when we take care of patients, uh, we have a list of 
things that we consider when we're talking to a patient. Do they look at their, at, does a patient look like they are their stated age? In other words, if I have somebody who comes in and says they're 50, but in my mind they look frail already or sick, then they look older than their stated age. If they're 70 and they look 50, then they look a lot younger than their stated age. And that's important to doctors. We always put that into our notes. But the signs and the physical problems that go along with frailty and aging are arthritis, osteoporosis, loss of muscle mass, inflammatory diseases like arthritis, heart disease, diabetes, uh, dementia, and the inability to live on your own or inability to take care of yourself. So doctors usually look for illnesses that they can treat. But frailty is not something that is considered by the mainstream medicine something to treat. It's just something to note and use that as a warning sign that the patient's getting sicker and sicker and on their way to death. I know this is depressing. I know it, 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 is, um, it is the status of what is going on in medicine today, but I have to tell you that you don't have to be frail. Uh, testosterone is the one hormone answer to frailty. And of course, it works best if when your testosterone decreases and you start getting some of the changes of aging, if you start your testosterone then. And that would be a, around age 45 for women and 55 for men. But you can start testosterone at any time and start building your muscles back and start becoming stronger. And, and you can have a better, a, a, a better stance you can walk with more confidence if you use that one hormone, testosterone, because it's the one thing that goes away and causes everything to start becoming catabolic or everything starts getting thinner or all of our muscles and everything that holds us up becomes, um, becomes thin. Not our fat. We get more fat, we lose muscle. To me, this is such an easy one answer, one hormone answer that I don't understand why everybody doesn't view this as a good answer to frailty and offer it to patients, but honestly, we're not trained with uh, testosterone replacement. It's not considered important to take care of old people like this. They just, the medical, medical community just says, you know, they go to a nursing home, somebody will take care of them, and it's kind of like we don't matter after we're 70. And by the way, I'm turning 70 in two weeks. So... I find this to be my age group that nobody really cares about. And I care about it. The New England Journal of Medicine um, in August of 2024, this August, um, draw, drew a direct line between frailty and death. But it didn't give you any answer to frailty. It just said, if you notice this, then you know that your patient's going to die within so many years. And I found that to be depressing. But I want to tell you about two very different patients of mine and as an example of what can happen. I had one gentleman come to me who was 70-something, and he wanted to, his, his goal was to become stronger and lose fat. So we did a body composition, and his body composition showed that he had very, not very much muscle and a lot of fat. And he had been an athlete, and he'd been strong, and he was noting that he was not able to do the things he used to do, and he wanted to play golf, and he wanted to feel good when he was uh, doing his job, and he was still working. So uh, we discussed weight loss and fat loss, actually, and uh, I, we talked about exercise and diet. We talked about uh, the fact that he had prediabetes and inflammation, and that I wanted to help him treat that. But we also talked about the fact that if he went on a weight loss program at this point, when you lose weight and you're already beginning your frailty, you're going to lose muscle. And he would lose muscle and fat, but he would lose as much muscle as fat. And he said he still wanted to try it. Okay, so he did part of the treatment that I suggested, but not the testosterone. When he came back several months later, he was, he was thinner, he weighed less, he was very happy with his weight loss, but when I put him on the body composition machine, he actually lost 
half of his weight loss was fat and half of it was muscle. And he was no stronger, he was weaker. And that convinced him that he had to do something different, that he had to actually listen to me and, and get testosterone to build his muscles back so that he could be stronger. He was thinner, he weighed less, but he had lost as much muscle as he lost fat. So compare that to another gentleman that was 82 years old. And he was an 82-year-old doctor who came in with his wife. His wife had been our patient for a while, and he was very excited about her progress. She was about 12 years younger, and she had done very well having her hormones replaced and with our, our nutrition plan our, uh, and our supplements. And she had done everything we asked her to do, and she looked great, and he wanted to be able to keep up with her. But he was 82. He'd been going through loss of testosterone for years, and he was very frail. When I shook his hand, it was very um, tentative, and it wasn't very strong. His grip was not very strong. But as I ushered him into the room and helped him into a chair, which I had to do, I touched his arm, and I could feel his bone because he had no muscle. And I, then I looked at his body composition, and his muscle was so low, it was in the, in the, deficient, air, in the deficient column. So right then, just by looking at him and not even talking to him yet, I could tell that we had, we had a lot of work to do. So um, he was a doctor who could think outside the box, and especially now, because nothing that he had tried was helping him. And he knew everything. He was a general practitioner. He knew everything about every medicine and nothing he had tried had worked. So he told me he was an athlete in college and he wanted more muscle and he had always been very muscly and very strong and his muscles had just melted away. That's frailty. Um, he was frustrated, he had trouble with his memory, other things were happening too, so he wasn't able to think as fast, he wasn't able to walk as fast, he couldn't keep up with his wife. Uh, he kept telling me he ate a nutritious diet and he had tried to exercise and work out every day, but he was just so tired when he got done because he didn't have enough muscle mass to actually help him with his exercise. His will was there, but his body wasn't. So we talked about testosterone. He agreed to take it. it he was not at high risk for taking it. It was, it was, he was ready to roll. And in five months when he came back, I didn't recognize him. He walked in with a spring in his step. He was very happy. Before he'd had kind of a slow speech and he was kind of tentative about telling me things. This time he was his, as his wife said, his old self. And he was very happy. On his body composition, he had lost fat and gained a lot of muscle because he had been eating high protein, like I told him, taking his supplements that I told him. He had been actually exercising like he always had, but he was no longer tired after exercise. He was energized. So he actually ratcheted back his frailty with hard work, but it was net, he was doing hard work before. He got testosterone, and that made everything else work. So even though... Medical, the medical uh, community hasn't come around to this yet. You have to find a doctor who believes in this so that you don't become frail and have to be taken care of by your kids or in a nursing home. It's very important for you to keep your body and keep your mind. And testosterone is a key to that for both men and women. I gave men at a, as my examples, but I've got just as many women who have had the same, same success. They just have lots of other successes. <laughs> Uh, that they that they tell me about, and this was much more straightforward. So even though medicine knows about frailty and they write us off when we're frail, you need to know that you don't have to be written off. You have the right to ask for the right treatment to help bring you back to health. And it is available, you just have to look for it. And you're not going to find it with doctors who are mainstream, and you're not going to find it with the FDA-approved drugs, because they don't really have FDA-approved drugs for frailty. They have, they have testosterone for sexuality, but not really for frailty. But it works for frailty, and it's a, it's a key factor for becoming not frail. So if you're 45 and female or you're 55 and male, you need to get your free testosterone checked, and don't use their normals. Their normals aren't normal. Their normals are 
old people normals. You need to have your free testosterone if you're a man over 129, and if you're a woman over seven, free, your testosterone has to, free testosterone should be over seven. So don't look at the normals there, just get your blood work and see if you need testosterone. If you have these signs, it's pretty evident that you need it. So please be healthy, please be independent, please take your testosterone and, and live your life. Don't live your life in a way that you can't really be robust. Thanks for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. 